Hand tap off here in the 18 boys gold medal match. Here we go. Let's see how the Aussies come out of the guns. They've been pretty electric with their start so far throughout the tournament. Moore switches in Prendergast. Deacon links up. Oh, they had numbers there. Decided to hold on to it. They've managed to almost squeeze it through. Yes, they have. Well, they got themselves out of trouble. The play was on the, uh, the set before, or the touch before, I should say. But calm heads prevail. They come out to the left and still get the points. The thing that surprises me most about their play is exactly what you said, is how they remained calm. There was a lot of pressure on them on the attacking end. The first option didn't come to hand, but they were able to bring it back in. Second phase option, look for the short ball, and a great try to start the game for, uh, for Australia. And Bailey Deacon scores the opening try here for the Emus. New Zealand be looking to hit back from the restart. Come up with a little mistake in the play the ball. Errors are something that's going to be really costly in this game. So if New Zealand want to compete, they need to cut down the errors. Trey down the sideline as changes come onto the field. And it's take up is on. Berryman plays it as well. Ellers. Can't get on the outside. Lovely touch from Dylan Pledger, who you did mention in the early stages leading into this game. That's a good touch there. New Zealand come down their sideline. Nice little pop out. Pass gets extra meters for Carter. Changes onto the field. Moiki plays it. Fifth and final touch. Right foot, left foot. Can't get on the outside of Ellers. He makes the touch and regains possession for Australia. And we spoke about getting the right people in the right places at the right time. And if New Zealand can tra transition well like that and get their way up the field, just like we can see here from Australia, I think that good things will come from it. Let's see how the Aussies transition out of their box. And Bell. Offloads to Barnes, could roll in, but gets good contact coming in. That was a great touch. That just completely nullified that last play. That's right. Being physical is probably an expectation, I would assume, especially from the referees. Uh, let's make mention of them for today's game. John Hamstra, Lachlan Freshwater and Mitchell Bailey. Penalty here to New Zealand. Their first of the game. Offside, Australia. That just shows the intensity as well and the fluidity that they're coming out of their box. To get a penalty as the new players are coming on, Australia really on the back foot and trying to regain some of that control around the in-change area. But New Zealand in good field possession. Have a full set of six to work with here. Looking to attack the align. Lunovic. We spoke in the last game, in the 18 girls game, about how important it is to win the ruck. And you can see that the battle here is between both teams about who can win the ruck in this game. He goes short side, left foot coming back in between two Australian defenders. Opened up nicely there, and Adam Morrison gets New Zealand's first try on the board. He'll be happy with that one. Try and of course it comes off, in. although it comes off a penalty, the, the skill level was unreal here. If we get a chance to watch it on the replay, you'll see just a really nicely timed pick up off the ground, a great left foot step and dives underneath and between the two players. There we go, bang, bang. And Australia just not in the best position defensively to, to counter that. Then back to live action. Australia off the restart. Loose ball hitting the deck. And possibly touch and pass penalty sees New Zealand regain possession. So job well done there for the Kiwis after scoring down the other end. And forcing the mistake from Australia. But now, as they're looking to get downfield, they've come up with an error themselves. Australia. Good field position, second touch. And we're just outside the seven metre line. Deacon and Prendergast. So dangerous on this end of the field. Oh, what's happened here? So the referee has called uh, the player number seven, Oscar Cameron, just offside there. So his feet were just short of the try line. He's called play on, given the best advantage to Australia to, to score what is, unfortunately, a pretty easy try for them. Yeah, that one, those kind of ones hurt, don't they? Particularly yeah. in a grand final. And we'll have a look at the replay here. So he did come up to make the touch. You can see he's short. Yeah, still short. Doesn't make the line. Good awareness from Prendergast. If he's just able to pop back and hit the line. There really wasn't anything happening there for the Australian. They were, they were numbered up, but yeah, that might hurt New Zealand. Let's see how they respond. Lunovic plays it. Cameron has to come back to Lunovic. Just outside the seven-metre line. 
Big ball in. Wow, just completely opened up there. Well, Cameron Chloe came infield, and when he had a little look up in the sky, the ball was going straight over his head and straight into the hands of New Zealand. Yeah, Australia really compressed their defence. I think they expected the short pass or, or the option to go towards or try and strike through the middle. But just something very different. We hadn't seen that a whole lot from Lunovic this weekend, but an amazing right-to-left try. And excellent positioning there from the winger as well. Yeah, as you can see, Cameron Chloe right up in the line. And this will look lovely from the reverse angle. Bang. Johnny on the spot, catches it. The try time. Bell now plays it more, that left to right, which we saw in the round games. He really sets up and works for it quite consistently throughout the game. Just didn't come out of the hands cleanly on that occasion. New Zealand. The transition out of the end of the field has been pretty good. Only one error so far for them, and this has been a good aspect as those new players do make their way out onto the field. Last touch for them now. Bit of footwork. Trying to get on the outside. Bell makes the touch. Defensive positioning from Australia pre-touch, especially being in line with the referee, was really good. If New Zealand want to attack on the fifth, let's just make sure that you can have a little bit more impact when you're coming on the field in transition. Take her out of the interchange area. It's Deacon grits the teeth. He gets him going forward. Prendergast goes early ball to take her out in front. Catalano Jr.'s got him. Oh, had to play at that ball. Yeah, that looked like a short try for Australia. So great work from Lunia, but just to reach out and uh, provide a little bit of relief for New Zealand. Here was John Paul Catalano in the 11. A bit of space out on the left-hand side. Take her with the footwork. That's where coming up to make the touch it was Moiki. Prendergast sweeps, take it, goes back to him. Great defensive read coming in. Ollie McKenzie. Saw the threat coming, got himself into a great position to make the touch. Prendergast steps in, has a little bit of a look. Stutter step goes short, ball to Deacon, punching through the middle. Well, it looked like he had all the time in the world there, Blaze Prendergast. And he picked the right option and lovely little inside run there from uh, Bailey Deacon. We have to make mention of the off-ball work on the right link there. I think it was taken in the best position there. The expectation was, because of the play prior, that the ball was going to go back to the right, which created that space there uh, for, for Deacon just to punch through that in line and get that gap in between the New Zealand defenders. So it's trade now, push back up. Two tries in front. 3-1 on the scoreboard. As they give a penalty away, defending their line. 3-2, correction on the score. And Deacon scoring down the other end and picks the ball off. Contact on Prendergast down the sideline. As Pollard makes his way on field. Ellis shows it. Berryman links back up. Pollard steaming onto the ball. They come back to the right-hand side of the field. Ellis back on the inside. Referees are going to pull it back. Forward pass. Pretty expensive there from the Australians. Really exciting play. And it looks like another area here from New Zealand. It might have been uh, a forward pass from the ruck. Or a no touch. Yeah, it looked like the ball was actually placed down on the ground before the touch was affected. So again, just those real little minor errors. You've got to get that particularly on the first touch there for New Zealand because you can see Australia. Full set of six to attack with here. Black Berryman, left foot, back to the mark. What do they look to attack with here? The Emus, Pollard, open side, early ball from Ellis Diamond, tries to get on the outside, and a lovely touch from Kobe Reed. Nice and calm and composed so far in defence here, New Zealand. Australia, come back to the mark, as Diamond plays it. Back in field. Ellis reaches for it. Pollard. They come back to the open side. Early ball. Black Berryman on the outside and gets it down before the cover defence comes across. Sam Shepard gets his first try of the grand final. And a lovely set piece there from the Australians. Yeah, really cleverly worked. I like the way that Black Berryman was always an option, even though the ball looked like it was going to be shifting to the left. They went back to the right. Great long ball into the corner to Sam Shepard. See the replay here. 
The early ball release. And the out ball option. Had some work to do here. Shepard, cover defence coming across. Lovely finish. 4 2 on the scoreboard to Australia. Fowler goes back in field. It's into half. Just need to look to set up here in New Zealand. Fowler plays it. And earns himself the penalty. And you can see, I even called it. He was looking to, to play it at that stage. Australia pulled out of the touch within that seven metre zone. Penalty given to New Zealand. The numbers out here on the left hand side of the field. I'll come back. You can see Australia starting to compress. They see Adam Morrison in the middle of the field. He's a real threat. And he's hovering. Munovic looking to sweep. He's got the ball in his hands. Morrison picks up half space for him to work in the end goal. Aaron just open up as easy as you like for New Zealand. Liam Carter. New no one in front of him. Three, and the third try into the number three. That's clever eyes up footy. Adam could see that the, the left side link on the Australian side was compressing. And he took full advantage of it. Lunjevic bounces out onto the outside of him, created more space, runs through the gap, and then links up with Liam Carter for a great try for New Zealand. Drops that margin back down to 1-4-3. On the scoreboard now, Prendergast. Right foot, tries to get on the outside. They've got his measure this time around. Oliver Wine and making the touch. More. The incorrect play, the ball. New Zealand hold out. After scoring a try down the other end. And looking to transition more. Comes up and puts some defensive, defensive pressure on from the middle of the field. Rudy Dwarma gets some flowing forward. Sort of pick up and go. Pledger. Just go over the top. Just can connect up. Dylan Pledger, one of the faster players in this New Zealand team. If they can get really good go forward again from the transition he's always going to be an option with the ball in hand straight restart from the penalty just having to hold the ball up here this is an opportunity for New Zealand to get up and put pressure a little bit untidy and there you go forces the mistake so not the cleanest transition there from the Australians this is a good opportunity here for New Zealand Here's Pledge up, who offloads Carter. A try scorer for New Zealand. Huriyama. Working with Pledger in the middle of the field for New Zealand. Here he goes. Nice late ball at the line. And Diamond just making the touch. Last touch for New Zealand. Can they create something? There's players offside into the in-goal area. Goes Pledger looking for support. Hoops one over the top. <laughs> Referees are just going to come together quickly here. Geez, there was a bit going on on that play. He might come back to a penalty to New Zealand. Yeah, full advantage applied there by the referee, Mitchell Bailey. Uh, so players were, I assume, called for leaving early, which gave Dylan Pledger the opportunity to sink through the line. Another full si set of six oh, to work with. Yeah, a mistake in the play the ball. So New Zealand couldn't capitalise on that opportunity. And looking to level up the scores. Australia cleaner this time around. There's Barnes, good pressure, contact, a little bit too much from Fowler. We can see that physicality coming in through the middle of the field on that touch from Jake Fowler. Although there was a penalty, I actually expect the intensity in terms of the contact to, to maintain throughout this game. Bell and Barnes in the middle here for Australia. Jordan across field. Take it just having to take a couple of steps to get into half. Nullifies that next play. And they realign now. Take it going short. Bell trying to go phase. That's a good call, I think. Wallet put him off his feet. I think that needs to be a little bit of advantage for the defensive side there when teams are looking to play that phase so close to the try line. It didn't yeah. look over vigorous. And it wasn't, but also we have to assess that the defender's coming at a different angle towards the attacking player, mm. which is which is what led to the player leaving his feet. But it wasn't a legal contact at all. Oh, space up here through the middle. Great work to get it down on the deck. They had numbers on the left. They come back to the right. They've got numbers on the right as well. Don't worry about that. 
Liam Carter goes over for another try. New Zealand go back to back and they've leveled up the scores. Number three, Liam Carter. Any coach will tell you they love it when you can score from one end of the field to the other, and that was one of the best tries I think I might have seen all weekend from New Zealand. If we get a chance to have a look at the replay, you can see this great work. Just Oliver won and really patient. Didn't give the first pass, but the soldier dummy, Kobe Reid, early release, awesome try in the corner from Liam Carter. It was great lead-up work as well from Tay Moiki as well. He saw the space, and a lot of the times you can just get yourself into continuing to go down. He got the ball down on the deck, but the follow-up after that was top-notch from New Zealand. Lovely try. Can they hold out here? Yes, they will. Referees are going to say another set of six to Australia. Ooh, almost looked like it was coming out of the fingertips there of Deacon. New Zealand with some work to do to defend their line. Australia attacking down the short side. Prendergast won't get in underneath. Great inside cover again from Fowler. Australians come back. Looking to have another crack. More. Oh, Prendergast puts the footwork on. Gets away from the New Zealand he defenders. Try number one, Blaze Prendergast. Well, we talked about him at the start of the game. And the captain's having an influence here for the Australian team. And what worked well for them is they, they looked at the attack for touches before on the right side, but then consolidated and shifted the ball back to the middle. So the sweet play here was really what caught New Zealand off guard. It created that little space that was all that was needed in between Fowler and Cameron uh, for Prendergast to get through. 5-4 Australia back in front. As Cameron plays it, they come back. Pledger, lively ball, all dipping away. Mihardi had work to do, referees, so we're signalling that that did come forward. So even if you held on to that, it would have been taken away from New Zealand, but it opened up for them. And Australia will get the changes out onto the field. Catalano, clean from the transition. His bell offloads. Barnes brings it in. And it just gets a ball behind. And he couldn't reel back in. New Zealand, you get some intensity coming forward out of their end of the field. This worked just to pick up an extra couple of metres. Lunovic hits him over the halfway line. Moiki, good again. Lunovic, they're, they're off here, Australia. They'll come back in the middle of the field. They've been caught short a couple of times here, particularly as uh, New Zealand and transitioning out of their interchange area. That's at least two or three times we've seen that happen. And it comes off the great yards again from Team Moiki. And the referee was very clear in his communication to the Australian defenders that they were in front. And Lunjevic looked for the long ball, but they were fortunate to get the penalty again. Have to go down the short side and put the brakes on and come back out with touches to work with. Pledger, Moiki, and Lunjevic combining. Again, looking to get Australia coming forward. Very boisterous in the New Zealand box at the moment. Moiki from half. Pledger, short side, out they come. And they cram the cross and the penalty does come. Late in the set. When you get back-to-back -back sets on the line, it gives the time for the attacking players to actually start to pinpoint exactly where they want to try and attack. And I, you can see here uh, on the screen that they're, they're really trying to hammer on the New Zealand right-hand side or what would be the Australian left-hand side defence. So let's see if they go back to that side again here. Ludovic holds it up himself. Oh, wow, it almost opened up through the middle. Bell was just holding back on the line. But Morrison from half. Directing traffic out there. Steps away. A little bit of time to work with there, but just no real options again. Australia just holding their space quite well. Didn't really present anything to New Zealand on that occasion. Yeah, and a little disjointed from New Zealand. Kobe Reed's probably not the player that's to throw that ball. They probably want to get Lunjevic on that one again. William Barnes down the sideline. Diamond over the halfway line. Dangerous Prendergast back out on the field. Moore puts it through the hands nicely. Cash has a bit of space to work with. Sends it back in field. Good contact as well. Penalty here to New Zealand. The inside ball might have been forward. Touch and pass yeah, is the just call. just a late pass call on that last one. It's a great scramble defence from New Zealand on that. New 
Dillon played over the halfway line. The ball just took a little bit of a bobble there. And the Hooter sounds in the background. There has been a penalty for an interchange infringement. So Australia will get one final play here before the half. I don't think they've got a chance their hand. Or oh, maybe they will. More almost taking it to the line now. They put the touch and pass penalty. The New Zealand throw the football around. We might as well just keep going. Just let the second we half start now. <laughs> they come up and make the touch. There you go. So both teams. Well, if we're looking in, you probably would have seen on the screen there. If we're talking calm and composed, that's New Zealand to a T at the moment. We are over the top of their, their box. Very relaxed at the moment, which is good signs, I think, because it is a big stage, big occasion for them. And we were talking in between the halftime break about, you know, eight, they're still 18-year-old kids. Yeah. They're young boys, you know. Um, but they're showing all the good signs at the moment, New Zealand, that they want to go on with this and get the job done. Absolutely. There's a level of maturity that's asked of them that's never been asked of them before. So if they can maintain it and, and rise up to it, this is anyone's game. Can they get it done, New Zealand? They're within striking distance of Australia in this game. 20 minutes to play to see who's going to take the ultimate prize. And see how New Zealand go in their first possession here coming out of the halftime break. Pledger plays it a little bit short to Cameron. And then Prendergast makes the touch. They're going to turn the attack into defence now, trying to keep Australia down this end of the field. It's Diamond and plays it. Prendergast it's him over the halfway line. Nice meters coming out of the box from Catalano. Ellers plays it. Black Berryman switches back. Nice work from Catalano to hold it. They've got numbers on the right. Taker, right foot. Comes it back out to Ellers. They've got them covered so far, New Zealand. And Catalano has to fling it away. And they're up and about in the box for New Zealand. That was a great recovery for them. Really good defence. Really good defence. Calm and composed. Knew their role. Knew who they had to cover. And they were able to stop Australia on that play. Pleasure. Gets New Zealand towards the halfway line as the changes come on. Kobe Reid. Comes out of the box nicely. Fowler follows it up. Morrison tries to skip across, just losing his footing. Australia hold out in response. As Ellis take an extra couple of steps to get it to the acting half position to be able to pick that one up. Bell back out onto the field. Fifth and final touch. Gets good contact on the last touch as well. And that just nullifies the play. Australia send it over the sideline. So good back-to-back -back defensive efforts there from New Zealand. I'd be pretty happy with where they're about to start the set. And the most important thing is, although it didn't come off for them in the last set attacking-wise, bang, flick the switch straight into defence. Let's get the next job done. Foul up. Shy of the halfway line. And Ronnie Way, he's had it. His hands on the football. A lot of times throughout the games, we see a little mistake from New Zealand, though. Turns possession back over to Australia. And those errors aren't isolated. They're actually being... They're coming as a result of the pressure that, is Australia, that Australia are applying. Let's take it. Let's hold the ball. And change play is still flowing on the back for the Emus. Prendergast on the seven. Taker feeds it back. Deacon puts the ball in one hand. And Lachlan Freshwater is going to point to the spot. The Australians are the first to score here in the second half. They push that margin back out to two tries. 6-4 on the scoreboard. Fantastic use of space there. There's not a whole lot of space in that, let's say, 5-10 to 10 metre corridor that they had to work in, but they timed things really well. Get on the outside of Oliver One and, and Deacon just dots through for a great try from Australia. And they look so calm and composed in this area when they're attacking. Got options. He's pretty happy with that one. Bailey Deacon. As you can see the reverse angle. Again, the combination taker getting involved as well. New Zealand now looking to strike back. Pledger out the back. And they're up to make the touch. Straight back onto the football. And the metres here on the first touch. And the 10 to 15 metres there from Prendergast. And a mistake. So again, Australia haven't been super clean in that area of the game. Oh, that's loose. 
Unfortunately, coming out of the hands, just opening the door back up. McKenzie, and he knew as soon as it was thrown, wasn't the clean pass that he needed. And not only is that not the part of the field you want to lose the ball in, but New Zealand were unable to get any subs on. So this is another back-to-back -back set. Oh, yeah. And that's what can happen. And Taimana Ellis takes full advantage for the Australians. And this is a really critical part of the game here for New Zealand. Now, Australia have gone back-to-back -back coming out of the halftime break. They need to get a little bit of energy and get themselves back into this game. Yeah, it's an underrated aspect of the game is the concept of fatigue and New Zealand having to do three sets there. Two on attack, or two on defence and one on attack and just unable to, to withstand the, the pressure Australia have applied. And they've gone down the other end from the restart and it's been picked off by Blackberryman. And Australia now losing footing but still holding on to the football more. Barnes back to Jordan Bell. Barnes, again, last touch. Turn the ball back over. Again, decent field position for them to start their set, but they need to be clean up. And they've started off pretty well. Ludovic takes him forward. Will come over for a breather. The changes come onto the field and the well-earned penalty. Oh, it's going to go away from New Zealand. Interchange infringement at first. I thought it was going to be going in their favour. Unfortunately, it doesn't look like it, there's much going in their favour at the moment. It's Australia. Head downfield. Shepard coming in field to do some work while the interchange players make their way onto the field for the Emus. Catalano plays it on the seven, receives it back, right foot, left foot, stutters, pulls back, back out. Contact there untaken. I don't think you've got to clean play the ball, but the referee's going to say it was the contact. A bit of a foot potentially in the play the ball. Those are tricky ones to call, but from my perspective at least, the player with the ball in hand was just taken off balance there, so the penalty came from it. Bayon's a call. Prendergast not getting hands on the football. Steps in. Blaze goes back short side. Penalty's going to come to Australia. Not moving forward is the call. Fairly quiet out on the field, and they're quiet in the box at the moment, New Zealand. Catalano takes them on. Prendergast. Taker rips. They have to get on the wheels, and they're not going to get over there in time. There's not much Liam Carter could have done about that ball. A lovely ball out of the hand from Lennox. And it's all of a sudden, he it's danger signs now. Right. Sam Shepard. The New Zealand defence compressing there, which created the opportunities out wide for Australia. We'll see here on the replay. Just a nice, clean play, the ball. And an excellent right-to-left ball there uh, from Taker. He's having a really good game today. And this will look great on the reverse angle. Let's see Taker letting it sing. And the try scored from Shepard. So now 8 4. Australia skipping away after the half time break. New Zealand to hit back. And they needed that one. And it was Dylan Pledger who set it up nicely for them. They're back in the game. New Zealand try, number six, Tamaya Huirama. Yeah, that's right. They did need that try. They've got all the skills they need to compete in this game. They're just down by a few points. So the more pressure they can apply with ball in hand, the more important it is for them. And we can see here the play. Just great deception. Great awareness from Huirama about the space in front of him. Holds his line really well. Catches and dots down. Important defensive set here for New Zealand. They can't afford to let Australia score. Moore picks up, doesn't connect. The first job done. They're looking referees. Now blow a penalty. And that can be a bit deflating. Yeah, this is actually the second time in a row now New Zealand. On that right link side has been called offside. So the referees on one hand are working really well together. But two, New Zealand just need to drop and get to the line. Short ball and punching through. 
And Cameron Kalawi is catching New Zealand napping. And defensively coming off the back of a penalty for the referee, the player that was identified as the offside, immediately thinking, gosh, I've got to get all the way back on line, I don't want another penalty. It starts to play on the mind of the defender, creates some extra space, and Chloe goes through to score an, a very easy try, completely untouched. Yeah, you've got to think, he's the winger. The winger's coming yeah. from outside in. There's no one on his outside shoulder. And straight in between two New Zealand defenders, both clutching at air. So nice little set play from Australia. And obviously identified something, but New Zealand still managing to hold in there. Dylan Pledger. Goes down the other end and scores. They've got a Pleasure. lift from that now, New Zealand. It looked to me like the spacing defensively from Australia was just a little bit off from what we've seen earlier on in the game. Created some space on the left-hand side for New Zealand to just look to move the ball through their hands and a great try there from Pleasure. There's still plenty of time left to go in this game. Nine or so minutes. Defence is just going to be super important for New Zealand. They can't go try for try with New Zealand with a three-try margin. It'll help one touch to make. But Catalano gets himself into the in-goal area. There's players down on the deck. He's still there. Catalano switches it out the back. Referees are going to give a penalty. A bit of contact off the ball. Wow. Yeah, really tough call. We... Have seen this play a lot this weekend when the attacking player sweeps through the line. The defensive responsibility is to try and find a man without grabbing at the body, and this is what New Zealand's been called for. Oh, Jordan Bell has slipped through New Zealand defenders. Again, early in the touch count, looked like they were covered in there to make the touch. May have been short of the line. We'll have a look at the replay. Yeah, again, unfortunately for New Zealand, just on the... The wrong side of two calls now in a row, and Australia has been able to capitalise. Jake Fowler looks like his feet were just caught in front of the line. The referee's called advantage and play on, and an easy try there, sliding underneath from Jordan Bell. Tenth try of the game as well for Australia. Whoa, wow, flying effort through the air. It's come out of the hands forward. He was that looked spectacular. Yeah, it was. Liam Carter's a really well renowned referee he holds his depth uh, sorry winger he holds his depth really well so those long ball options are on when there's space out there on the right side and you can see well I think if that somehow managed to go backwards he did get control of the football now we see Australia give away a penalty New Zealand will tap and restart this might be an important set for them they can get a try here and it just keeps them within striking distance and they've got their weapons on the field, Dylan Pledger and Rangiwai Lunjevic. Here is Pledger just losing his footing, gets back up. Almost, he does get into the in goal area. Well, that's phenomenal for Pledger and connects up in the back, but Diamond comes across and makes the touch. Very rarely will you see a player at dummy half fall over, still get up and make it through the line. Oh. Keep an eye on him on this play now too. Amazing skill. Lunjevic from half. Short side, back on the end, yeah, Moore looked like he was in trouble defend, uh, retreating there in defence, exactly what New Zealand needed, they score yet again, and they continue New to hang Zealand on. Try. They're still New in this second. game, they've got the belief, as long as they can Fly, stay rama. tight and comply with the referees on defence, they're still in this game. Let's have a look at the replay here, just really well set up, because of course the Australian defence had drifted to the left hand side, it created some ex extra gaps and... Huidam are just able to expose the Australian defence and slide through here. 10-7. Can New Zealand hold out here? That's a beautiful ball from Taker again. Another penalty. And again, in that same spot, that right link, the referees are right on top of them. So Maxwell Fadiweta has to work harder to get back to the line to prevent penalties. Ella's right foot. Can't get in between. Plays onside this time around. Morrison makes the touch. What's happened here? Looks like a forward pass call, perhaps on the play prior. So New Zealand now with position. They need to try and get down the other end of the field. It's inside ball just takes a bit of a bobble. I mean, Australia can smell a bit of blood in the water here. That's a good little kick out there from Fowler. Picks up an extra couple of metres. Lunovic flows out nicely as well. 
Pledger. Lunovic from half has a look up. Lovely left to right. Comes off the back of Cameron Chloe. And the target's out there. The ball just a little bit misdirected. Hell is down the sideline. Pollard, ball in one hand. Jordan Bell punches forward nicely. Barnes, which with Bell again. Yeah, Goes ball in boys. one hand and the touch is made. Great touch from Pledger. Takes the first possession and links up with Lunovic. So make changes here, New Zealand. Australia. We're looking short. Retrieving. And they do give the penalty away for being offside in the middle of the field. Of course, when the referees are working as a team, there's three of them. So they take turns in the control referee. So just on that interchange there, the responsibility for the referee that's coming in the field is to make sure that the players on that, that right-hand side are complying and getting on side. Of course, they were short that time. Kobe Reed just having to come back to the seven-meter line to play it. Moiki having a look at the Australian defensive line. They pick up and go into the in goal area. Opened up. Oh, wow. Will they get it done in the end? Yes, they do. <laughs> <laughs> we had to take two there defense was, on that one. <laughs> there was a bit of stress there because I couldn't quite see who it was. A link hole was huge. And you can see the crowd. They know it as well. They just get away with it in the end. Doesn't matter how you get it, as long as you get it. Oliver Wynan going the hard way to get New Zealand's eighth try. Excellent uh, break through the line. And Maya Huirama was just standing there. Hey, I'm all alone. And he went the long pass to Tapa. But, of course, as a good winger does, he's in the right spot. And they dot down for a try. Well, that one's just going to look a little bit more fancy on the highlight reels. He thought, I'll go the hard way to get this one. And they get it done. And they're getting it done in defence to start here as well. The margin back down to two. Important defensive set yet again. Prendergast, Deacon, early ball. Catalano, left foot. Nice touch. Parawira. On Deacon, who's in half. Incorrect play the ball. So job done, New Zealand. And now here comes the most important part. You're down by two. You've got about three minutes left to play. We need to score on this uh, the set. If, if you're the New Zealand coaches, that's a message. Hordurama out of the box. Lunovic controlling things for New Zealand. Pledger. Footwork. Oh, loses his foot. He might have just got a clip on the boot there from Deacon. And equally for Australia. Now it's just about being safe with the ball. No errors. And using the clock to their advantage. Black Berryman and Ellers work in the middle of the field yet again here for the Emus. Ellers takes off. Pledger, it's been called out, out of the line. They go back on the inside. Play on is the call. New Zealand, unfortunately, short on the line. Australia take full advantage. They skip back out by three. That one's going to hurt for New Zealand. Dylan Pledger just called offside. The referees are very clear with their communication. He was short of the line. The advantage is given in Australia are able to score just by scooping through the line here. Yeah, but just didn't get both feet on the line there. Dylan Pledge up. Unfortunate for New Zealand. They need to keep their energy and cloth. It's going to become a factor for them now, potentially. Great ball. Beautiful line on the inside as well. Kobe Reed putting that one in an absolute platter. What a try. New Zealand try, number 14, Molly McKenzie. Yeah, that's a fantastic try from Molly McKenzie. Great deception, awareness of space, holding the line really well. So the short ball option was also on, but he held it up long enough to find Ollie McKenzie just in the perfect gap in between the two defenders there. Similar play to what we saw from Australia a little bit earlier on yeah. as well with the link and punching through a nice hole. And New Zealand return serve nicely there to get their ninth on the board. Australia. Oh, can't buy a penalty at the moment, the Kiwis. Precious seconds off the clock. 
Short side, Prendergast, and unfortunately again, short of the line. Valduera retrieving. Australia make them pay yet again. They've done that throughout the game when they get those back-to-back -back opportunities attacking the line. They've been coming up with the goods. That's right. Unfortunately, the, dis the defensive effort in the set prior, while it was there as a team, they were just unfortunate to get penalised. And it leads to opportunities for Australia to strike and score. And Prendergast, as he's done all weekend, just finds the space so well and scores Australia's 12th. Oh, and they've turned the ball over here, the Kiwis. It's a bit of finger pointing, having a look around. Not the way that they were. Hoping to close this one out. Canelano on the sideline. Coming out field, I should say, as Bell and his rolls forward. William Barnes, very simple football here for Australia. Winding down the clock. Out to the corner, and Cameron Chloe finishes it off. The Australians steam onto the field. They take the victory in the 18 boys, but gee whiz, they had to work for it. A very gallant performance from New Zealand. They threw everything they could at the Australians, but the Emus too good at the end of the day. And at the start of the 